This is as far as what Dr. Fauci said the other day. And I know that Delta remains very dominant, but you said this week that you're also keeping a close eye on the Mu variant, and the World Health Organization has listed it as a variant of interest. What does a close eye mean? What are you looking for? Well, you're looking to see if it becomes more dominant, namely if the relative proportion of isolates in a given place, including in this country, becomes more. Right now, we're not seeing that. The Delta variant is over 99% dominant. So when we say we're keeping an eye on the Mu variant, we want to make sure it doesn't become more dominant. We actually don't know what the consequences would be. The concern is that it has a few a constellation of mutations that would indicate that it might evade the protection from certain antibodies. That's what we mean when we say we're keeping an eye on it. But right now, it is not an immediate threat, even though we take all of these variants very seriously. It's, what, that scares the hell out of me when he says the Mu is not a, a, a definite threat. He's been wrong so many times. <laughs> You know, you, you all want to go out and go and get another booster shot or something. Yeah, I mean, I think what he's really saying in that word salad is that it's vaccine resistant, or there's some indication that well, it's vaccine resistant. Well, did they not say that about Delta variant at one point? To some degree, right? I mean, the vaccine doesn't work as well on the Delta variant, but it certainly reduces transmissibility. It certainly reduces the severity of the virus. I think uh, I think what he's saying right there, if you want to be really scared, is yeah. we, don't, we don't think the vaccine's going to work on this strain. You know, the guy that I've been following, Paul, is a guy named Scott Gottlieb, who was yeah. the head of the FDA yeah. on Pfizer's board, does CNB, uh, CNBC. And, you know, he's just made the case that this thing is endemic, right? There, there's no way we're getting rid of COVID. It's here to stay. We're going to have a bunch of variants. The best case scenario is that it becomes something like the flu yeah. or something like yeah. the other strains of the common cold that are caused by the coronavirus. Um, but, you know, th what you've got to do in the interim is try to mitigate against the transmission of these more deadly strains and then ultimately do things that, that prevent those things from happening when you get affected that become really severe, end up in the hospital, end up dying. Um, but but this thing's here to stay. Yeah. Have you ever you – didn't, you didn't get it yet. Did, I, you didn't. I've been vaccinated. I've, I've been lucky enough not yeah. to contract COVID. So, yeah. You know, it, it is amazing. And when you go back in politics, Ross, and you say, well – one of the reasons that it was absolutely tantamount for China to make sure they could do everything they can to get rid of Trump and that he does not win another term is if you and I owed uh, a great deal of money to someone and then they did something to you to where you could sue and then tear that IOU up, and that was something that probably would be forthcoming uh, in a world court or wherever it was held, as far as did this thing come out of uh, the Wuhan lab? Rand Paul is just tenacious on Once this. Once the public figures out that they were doing very, very dangerous research there, gain-of-function research, taking animal viruses and making them more transmissible into humans, once everybody puts this together, he realizes where the blame's going to attach. He has at least tangential responsibility. If this came from the lab that he was funding, my goodness, can you imagine the moral culpability that the man has? Since 2012, he has said repeatedly, yes, an accident can happen, but the research is worth it. Even if an accident were to cause a worldwide pandemic, the research is worth it. These emails are frantic, going back and forth. At 2 o'clock in the morning, he's still saying, sending emails out. The first email he sends to his assistant is one of these research papers with Dr. Xi from the Wuhan Institute that is gain of function. His assistant responds, oh my goodness, this is gain of function research. It's like, oh no, they've discovered that this is going on and we might have funded the origin of this virus. So immediately they're circling the wagons. They're having urgent meetings. Meet with me immediately, he says to his assistant. Read this paper, which is a gain of function paper. He was alarmed, but then to his boss, he's putting on a different front and he's saying, everything's okay. It looks like there's no chance it came from the lab. Meanwhile, a virologist is sending him an email saying, four of us agree this looks like a virus that was manipulated in a lab. Yes, from the very beginning, I think he was covering up because he realized that there would be a great deal of culpability of blame attached to him mm. if a lab that he was funding through the NIH turned out to be the source of a pandemic that cost four million people to die. Four million people.